It's a beautiful sunny afternoon and I wanted to show you a simple 12 volt solar setup that I've got here and how easy it is to configure what size wires to use for these specific components and what kind of fuses and the, the ratings for those fuses that you can use. So let's get started. All right, so what we've got here is a couple of six volt golf cart batteries. We have got them wired in what we call series. So I have the uh, positive terminal of this battery running to the negative terminal of this battery. So that means that this becomes my main positive in my system and this becomes my main negative. So then what do we have off of that? So if we talk about how the power flows in, we've got our solar panel. We are coming through our MC4 connectors here, which are a pretty standard connector in the solar world, off to, um, let's see, these are, these are 12 gauge wire. I'm running to 10 gauge. Um, for a short run, certainly 12 gauge would work fine. 10 gauge gets me a little uh, extra room there. And then we're gonna run through, I got some extra wild wire coiled up here, into our charge controller. So now I've got my, my photovoltaic in, so my PV plus and my PV minus, and I've got it wired in right there. So then, this solar charge controller from Power Mister can do 60 amps. Now they rate this 60 amps at the voltage of your battery, how, how, how fast it can charge, not at how many amps of solar you have. It's rated on the, the below side, the downside where the battery's at. So with this, this is with a 12 volt setup, 60 amps gives you what, 720 watts. So this being a 395 watt panel, I could run two of these panels and I'd be pushing about 60 amps into the batteries with good sun. The next part we have, we've got solar coming in. Now we have battery coming out. Now, um, I've doubled up my wire here, you'll notice. So like these two red wires are both going to the same lug here on the battery. And that's because it's 10 gauge wire. And when you're running 60 amps, 10 gauge isn't enough. However, two 10 gauge wires gets you well above that. So if you're looking at 60 amps, a couple 10 gauge wires when you're running a couple feet will work just fine. And this charge controller actually doesn't support more than 10 gauge wire. So you really, you have to do that. You have to go ahead and run two positives and two negatives. What I did is I used six gauge lugs. The two 10 gauge wires fit nicely in there and I soldered them in. I'm working on getting some crimpers so that works better. But for now, solder will work just fine. And then I heat shrink them up just to keep as much of the metal away from people's fingers as possible. So the next part is this part down here. Now you'll see that there's the lug here and the lug here. This is a 40 amp breaker. Now really this should be a, uh, probably an 80 amp breaker considering I'm charging through here. Uh, but I'm, I built this for one solar panel, not for two. So for one solar panel, 40 amps is great because I'm gonna be pushing what, about 35 amps. With my single 400 watt panel, I should be maxing, around, maxing out around 30 to 35 amps. So a 40 amp breaker means that if something short circuits, then that breaker should flip at 40 amps. All right, so then that comes over to this terminal. This might look a little weird that these are in series, but this works out. This is a 100 amp fuse, um, which is of course more than the breaker. So it doesn't matter that it's in line in this case um, because it's a higher rating than the breaker. So. That is where my positive runs to from the charge controller. My negative will run up and just go straight to the negative terminal of the battery. No fuse or breaker needed. All right, so now the solar charge controller at that point has power from the solar panels and it can charge the batteries. Now the other part you need is for your load. Now in my case, my load is this 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. At 1000 watts, you're gonna be hitting something like 80 to 100 amps. The input's rated at 100 amps. Um, so we did the same thing. We did the double 10 gauge. Now this one I could have just gone with, I'm not sure what it would have been like, six or eight gauge wire, but I had the 10 gauge and I knew how to do these lugs. So I went ahead and just did the double 10 gauge. It also keeps the wire a little more flexible. Um, and, and everything's the same size. So got my, my six gauge, five sixteenths lugs and got those wired in. So that'll hold, that'll handle that 100 amps just fine. 
So negative, just like on the charge controller, goes straight to the battery negative terminal. Positive comes in here to the middle terminal. And that's because the inverter can pull more, certainly in surge, than the charge controller will provide. So I didn't want to run them, I didn't want to run it on a 40 amp breaker. This is on a 100 amp fuse. And this fuse, I just ran down to AutoZone and grabbed this. This is no big deal for a 12 volt system. They've got plenty of fuses. Same thing for the breaker. I just ran down to AutoZone and grabbed the breaker. So now, if the battery shorts out, it'll blow that fuse. If the charge controller shorts out, it'll blow the circuit breaker. So now you've got everything hooked up to the batteries. So the real question is, what can you power off of a couple golf cart batteries, which these are just used batteries. I tested them. They've got about one kilowatt hour worth of capacity in them. And yeah, the life isn't going to be a lot on those 150 bucks for the two, which isn't too terribly expensive. So thousand watt inverter. What, uh, what can we run off of that? Maybe my angle grinder. This thing is rated at 4.4 amps. So that should work. Let's get this plugged in here. Doesn't skip a beat. And here we are, we're pulling in about 305 watts off of the solar. You can see our voltage is up at 14 and a half. So it's already at max charge voltage which means it could probably pull a little more wattage off that panel if the batteries weren't already topped off. Because then I turn this on. And there you have it, a simple setup that can run a grinder, which is not something you need to run 100% duty cycle anyway. Um, but I'm actually, it might be fine at 100% duty cycle when the sun's shining. Just not after hours. One kilowatt hour? That would run my 5,000 BTU air conditioner non-stop for about an hour. No, I'm sorry, two hours, because it runs about 500 watts an hour. Plenty of power if you just wanted to like run a TV for a couple hours at night, charge your iPads, your iPhones, your Androids, your tablets, all those kinds of things. So certainly a capable setup. Something like this I calculated with the solar panel and everything to be about 800 bucks. If you source it all locally, probably, you know, I'm sure you could find it less than that. Um, the charge controller is about 100 bucks on Amazon. This pure sine wave inverter was about 220 bucks on Amazon. The batteries I picked up for 150 bucks from a used battery store, and that was without cores to turn in, so that included the core charge. And these solar panels, I mean, I've got these around that I'm selling them for 165 a piece, but it seems like a lot of markets have that. They're, uh, you know, find yourself a used uh, a solar panel that would be used at a, a grid level or on someone's roof. Um, maybe they went through a hailstorm and they got all of them replaced, but some of them were just fine. Anyway, seems like a pretty nice setup here. Just wanted to show you guys how it was wired up, what kind of wire gauges I used and why, and then the fuses that was used in it. And I kind of added an extra there, what can you power off of it? So let me know what you think and what kind of system you're planning on setting up.